Hi everybody, so back in video 1562, and if you think we're at video 1800 or so, that's nearly a year ago. But anyway, back in 1562, we strapped this together. It is in fact a Newman motor, and I made it out of a transformer for a microwave oven. I just picked out that coil from two of them, and there they are there. I glued them upright onto a piece of board. Right in the centre here is a whole group of magnets, that's north, that's south and they're on an axle so we can spin them. Now that is the Newman motor. Now whatever you think about the Newman motor, I got this running as a DC motor using a single transistor as a commutator. So it's electronic commutation with a single transistor. That actually is astounding when you think about the trouble you go to to commutate DC motors normally, but we can do it on a Newman with a single transistor. I thought it was very cool. Ever since I did that, I did that, I've had some guys saying to me, can you do it as a generator, Rob? Because that's a Newman motor. Do you know how it's going to perform as a generator? Because it is going to perform as a generator. I mean, we've got a spinning magnet in between some coils. It, it's going to generate, OK? It's just a question of how much it's going to generate, really. But it is going to generate. Then I was mulling it over a little bit because, of course, normally with generators, what you do is put them on a steel armature and that's quite problematic. Here, of course, we just collected two coils and glued some magnets on and we've actually got ourselves a generator for next to no trouble at all. And it's coreless, which in itself is extraordinarily interesting. Now, because this is north and the opposite is south, as I spin it and it intersects with this coil, the south is going to be intersecting with the back coil, so it's 180 degrees apart. So if I just connect up those two coils any old how, there's a good chance I'll get nothing at all out of it. You have to connect them up a certain way. The way you connect them up is you clip onto one side of the coil on the input side, and you clip onto the other side of the coil on the output uh, input side, so input and input, and then you bridge across the two outputs. Now it's dead easy to tell if you've got it right or you've got it wrong because if you don't do the cross connection and you spin it, you'll get nothing out. If you do it in the right connection and you spin it, you'll get something out, okay? So you just, it's only four connections, just attach them and when you spin it and you get something out, you know you've got it connected the right way. If you spin it and nothing comes out, you've got the cross connection wrong. So if I were to connect that to there, I would get nothing. By connecting it to there and that to there, then I'll get output from it. So you only have to test a few connections, but it's dead simple how to do it. And what I've got is I've connected it in series with this six volt light bulb, and I've put it onto the amp reading on my trusty multimeter. And what we're gonna do is spin it and see if we can light up a six volt light bulb by spinning it. Now, turns out, <laughs> We can just by spinning by hand. So that's kind of awesome all by itself because you can't actually read this because uh, it's catch up time is a bit too slow for the output we're doing here. So I'm going to attach it to a drill and spin it with the drill and we'll see what we get. Incidentally, for all those people who think it's clever to say, ooh, you're spinning with a drill, there's much more energy, what a waste of time. Let me assure you, it's actually not a very clever thing to say. I'm using a drill as a prime mover, as an example. You could use any prime mover, including a, a wind turbine, a water wheel, trained elephant, so look, any prime mover will do it. I just happen to be using a drill as a prime mover. Okay, so let's put it on and we'll see what we get out of it. quarter of an amp. That's actually very impressive when you think about what this thing is. It's a coreless generator made out of a couple of scrap coils that I got from a microwave oven. So there's my homemade scrap thing and I thought what I'd do is give a kind of comparison. So what I've got here is a shop bought generator. It cost me about £30. It's 12 volts, 120 watts. It's the kind of thing you normally find in a wind turbine and I've got it in exactly the same setup. So I've got my 6 volt lamp right there. It's on an amp reading. We're going to spin it up. It's in series and we'll see what kind of amps we get out of a shop bought generator.
<laughs> so it's barely, sorry, it's barely lighting the bulb. It's about 13 or 14 milliamps, and this one was quarter of an amp. So I think I can quite categorically say that my Newman generator is better than one that you could um, buy from a manufactured source. And that's just plain ridiculous if you think about it, because that was scrap. Anyway, I thought I'd just quickly run that up because I was asked to, and it does seem to perform pretty well, especially as a cordless generator. This is cord, but that's cordless. Uh, and it definitely, under the same setup, that performed far better than that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.